Hey guys, it is Dom back at IFA 2016 here in Berlin. We are at the TCL booth and we are talking to... Marek Maciejewski, Product Development Director for Europe. Thank you very much. And we're here to talk about their new TVs. Uh, so I've got a couple of questions lined up because I was actually at the TCL event the other day. And there are a couple of things that I, I wanted to speak to you specifically about the more manufacturing and technology oriented side of it. So uh, obviously you guys have open heartedly embraced uh, quantum dots. Yeah. Uh, what for you uh, was the deciding factor between quantum dots and OLEDs? Because they're the two very hot new technologies and there are some people very vocal people on either side, but for you guys? Uh, well, uh, so uh, first of all, uh, if we compare so uh, technologies, so there is OLED technology and there is LCD technology. Uh, Quantum Dot is more to deliver white color gamut, so to fully cover uh, DCI color space. Uh, today we can color 93, 94% of uh, DCI color space. That's DCI-P3, which is the, DCI the, the, the cinematography yes. landscape. So if it, what the film was shot in, you're more able to well, closely replicate. Well, precisely, yes, correctly, correctly display that uh, what directors wanted to show, we can uh, show it. So uh, Quantum Dot is for this. Then uh, in the second step... Uh, no, 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 it's fine. In the second step, we will uh, deliver 100% uh, DCI coverage. Uh, it will be uh, with Dunk. quantum dots and with uh, uh, revised color filter. But what is the most important is that with quantum dots and with LCD, with local dimming, we can deliver a very bright uh, uh, picture, 1,500 nits. Uh, uh, brightness and uh, in OLED you have uh, for a limited brightness of the yeah, picture. Yeah, it's roughly five to six hundred yeah, nits in current generation I've, I've seen. Um, so uh, you are also, is it the Ultra HD Alliance where you're certified for? Uh, well, the product uh, we introduce right now uh, is uh, in uh, UHD Alliance uh, certification for premium logo. So uh, the product uh, will have uh, this logo, uh, but on our side, uh, OLED is part of the roadmap, but as a printed QD OLED, uh, which it was announced as part of the plan for Gen 11 Fab, uh, which uh, uh, will be open in uh, 2019. Yes, which was actually spoke uh, my my second question. So uh, you spoke a little bit about your Gen 11. Uh, manufacturing and you've gone through Gen 6, Gen 8 and everything else and again you spoke about QD OLEDs, so quantum dot OLEDs which for people that don't know uh, is essentially direct emissive quantum dots if I'm correct. Yeah. Uh, so you're directly stimulating the quantum dots instead of having a backlight. Yes, uh, the point is that uh, today with the current we can say that current OLED technology is already obsolete technology because uh, can deliver DCI uh, color space but uh, in terms of uh, energy efficiency is uh, not as good as should be. Mm -hmm. The technology which is on the market for uh, TVs is so-called white OLED so we can say it's a kind of uh, black and white uh, backlight on top of this we have you color filter uh, and uh, then uh, this is clear that on the efficiency side and also on uh, uh, DCI coverage uh, this technology is reaching uh, its limits mm -hmm. uh, but if we look on UHD uh, 1 uh, uh, roadmap and UHD2 which is defined by EDU and DVB in Europe so UHD1 is split into three parts is phase 1, phase 2A, phase 2B. Uh, phase 2A is white color gamut uh, and uh, HDR, phase 2B will come with uh, more uh, frames but anyway what we need we need brightness because we don't watch TV in basement we watch TV in bright rooms uh, so uh, this is more or less direction and quantum dots uh, printed uh, OLED uh, with QD will uh, let us uh, to go closer to REC 2020, mm -hmm. which is part of uh, UHD specification. Okay, so uh, eventually what we will have then is two types of essentially OLEDs, but obviously OLEDs are organic light emitting diodes. They break down over time. Uh, quantum dots are inorganic, they're manufactured, so they will last a lot longer. Um, as you said, it's more efficient, it's able to go a lot brighter than, it, uh, than OLEDs can, so you'll be able to more 
precisely cover the, the spectrum. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, uh, in in the presentation, you spoke about the the X1, which is your newest TV, which is actually behind us, I believe. Um, you said that you actually went thicker. You, it was, I think it's from six to eight mil because you wanted backlight uniformity. Well, uh, the point is that uh, the thickness uh, of the screen or uh, the thickness which is seen by end user right now is 18 millimeters. Uh, so inside we have uh, local dimming, direct dimming uh, backlight, which is made of 288 zones. Do you wanna, uh, sorry, do you wanna roughly tell the, you, the readers what local dimming the advantages of local dimming over edge dimming? Well, uh, in edge dimming, uh, we just uh, put the light uh, usually from the bottom of the screen and the light is propagated by the light guide plate. Uh, by this, we can generally uh, dim uh, vertically. We can split the screen to something like 12 or, 12 or 24 segments, but it's very difficult to dim uh, also uh, horizontally, so to split screen, for example, to 100 or 200, 300 zones and precisely control uh, uh, brightness of each zone. With direct dimming, uh, with 2D dimming, we can do it. So here we have this uh, 288 zones. Uh, it is uh, 8 millimeters thick uh, uh, solution, which is very slim. Uh, and uh, what we decided, uh, yeah, we changed uh, during the uh, development process the thickness from 6 to 8 uh, to improve uniformity because for this kind of high-end uh, TV sets we need uh, uniformity on the level of 85% uh, minimum and uh, by, let's say, people uh, don't see the difference on the white down to 70%. Below 70% yeah. uniformity issues are, are visible. Okay. Um, so, they said that's an interesting one, nevertheless. Are steps like that ones you, you aren't afraid to take off and as a company? So, is it you weren't afraid to halfway through the um, design cycle say, look, edge dimming, not good enough, we're going to go direct lit and we're going to make it a bit thicker? Uh, do you do that in other parts? So, it's like, all right, that speaker's not good enough, we're going um, to well, change the location of the speakers, it's going to make it uh, a, a slightly different shape. But there it gives are, the end user a better experience. Are you afraid to take these steps? Or? Well, no, because uh, in this product, we the target is to deliver, uh, it's a flagship product, so we deliver ultimate uh, picture quality and ultimate sound quality. So uh, we don't want uh, to force users to buy sound bars if they want to have good sound. Uh, here, okay, to deliver excellent sound, uh, it can be only done with front firing speakers because uh, down firing speakers, okay, if the TV set is on the wall, so then, okay, you have no sound. Or even if you have it on the table, uh, the sound quality is uh, very low. So in this TV set, we have also dome tweeters, uh, which are generally associated with uh, premium uh, speakers in audio systems. So, uh, and we have also enclosures, uh, which capacity is, uh, I don't remember precisely, but it is uh, two or three liters uh, for each. Uh, so we have uh, enclosures and we have three-way uh, system. So anyway, the target was to deliver excellent sound. Uh, in fact, it is uh, the next step because uh, two years ago we did the project with also with quantum dots, but it was based not on a film but on tubes, mm -hmm. and we had much larger speakers. So here we continue to improve sound quality, but also minimize the size of speakers, but still to have front firing speakers. Brilliant. Um, and my last, my last real question, technolog technological wise, is uh, the inclusion of Android TV. Uh, Android TV is one of the main operating systems on the TV. Uh, was that something that you had anticipated from the beginning, or again, was it something added in later on? Was it was it difficult to? Uh, obviously, Android TV requires a lot more processing horsepower than a standard TV UI does. Um, was it something from when you were designing this TV from the ground up? Right? Did you yeah. say we're going to have a smart TV? It's going to be powerful, no compromises or did you have to make a lot of changes to accommodate Android TV? Well, uh, in fact, when uh, we look on the product, uh, which is flagship product, so then uh, on the one side, uh, we deliver uh, excellent picture, excellent sound, so then we have to deliver also ultimate user experience. 
uh, and then uh, logically uh, what uh, the, the step uh, here is uh, to go for Android TV because uh, on the one side it's a brilliant uh, operating system, uh, it is full of content, uh, there are also available games, uh, so, uh, and then it is an uh, open system which is uh, used by many mobile phones, tablets, so people who have uh, account uh, can synchronize all the content, all the achievements in games, so this is logical step uh, for this kind of product. Yeah, I mean, because if I'm not mistaken, uh, TCL also make uh, TVs with the Roku software built in. Not in Europe, I don't believe, but in North America and yeah. stuff like that. Uh, was was Roku even a consideration for this TV, or were you? We need well, to have the best experience, and the best experience at the moment is Android TV. Well, uh, Roku is an excellent solution for US because uh, content is available in US. Uh, then uh, in Europe, uh, we in fact uh, did products which are uh, HTML uh, smart TV, uh, but uh, content development is very difficult uh, yes. because uh, content uh, providers are supporting uh, Android devices, supporting uh, some other devices, but uh, Smart TV Alliance, uh, which we joined uh, to develop content, was not a very successful concept. So then first we have to look on the available content because of course we can come with a Roku operating system but if inside is almost nothing, there are no local services in different countries like uh, uh, catch up broadcast services in Germany or in France or in, in UK. So then uh, nobody will buy this TV set because people want to have easy access to the content. And also what we give today, we provide uh, cast in yes. case uh, content uh, or customer the application is available uh, in your device so then you press the button and uh, see it on the TV screen. Which is another um, thing we've seen from other TV manufacturers, they, they, fall, they fall when the operating system entirely is just built cast in, which to me seems like a, a kind of backward step. I think that well, you know, uh, casting is a great medium and like I said if the the catch-up service you're trying to use doesn't have an Android TV app, but they have a phone app, you can cast it, um, and that, that bridges the gap. But if you're relying solely on casting, I don't think it's going to be a good user experience. Well, uh, you know, it's uh, more, you know, question uh, who is our target group. If we look for people uh, who uh, used to use remote control and mainly look for remote control experience, so cursor, uh, let's call it this way, experience, uh, so then yes, but then if we look on uh, young people uh, who, uh, only, who mainly use uh, mobile devices uh, or smartphones or tablets, so then cast might be an option for them because then pre they, they press the button and have it on the large screen. But uh, this is more or less uh, the answer. It's a good bridge. Yes, the answer uh, which uh, should be done by different uh, market researchers uh, to, to be sure uh, which, which way we should go. We see cast as additional feature in Android TV as an option. If the market in Europe is ready for TV with cast only, okay, it's uh, another discussion. Yeah. Well, thank you for your time. Uh, this you. has been actually quite eye-opening for me. I was sitting in your event and I, I was drawn to the TVs. I think right next to me was one of your city line, the S79, yes. the, the flat one. And I was, I was watching your presentation and I could see something in my periphery and it, it just made me smile. And I think that's what these should do. They're, they're windows into other worlds and you've created a beautiful window. <laughs> yeah, we go uh, to this direction and then uh, as TV is going to uh, sense of being uh, there and sense of looking through the window, so then it's more the matter of the next few years to achieve uh, this goal. Well, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Uh, Alright guys, so there will be a write-up for the TCL event on mobiletechtalk.co.uk. I'm going to see if I can get either a city line or an X1 to review. If I'm very lucky, I might be able to get one. But uh, this is not the last you would have heard from TCL at IFA 2016. Goodbye.